Remember the time when Game of Thrones was actually good and nothing in life seemed to matter when the new episode was about to air? Well, before all that, there was HBO's Rome and it was glorious from the very beginning to the very end for the whole two seasons. Hey, I'm Robin, I love history, but I'm better at watching movies, so here we talk about historical film and TV. Today let's talk Rome, because I feel this show did us all a huge favor by arriving, in my opinion, slightly ahead of its time, was cancelled way before its prime, and deserves a very special tribute, so let's roll. Early 2000s was the time when historical epics were at their peak, movie theaters were full, high production costs justified, and the quantity was just enough to keep us always hungry for more. There is no surprise HBO took a risk introducing something very bold to their roster. Sure, Deadwood has already aired and was doing just fine. Stand it like a man and give some back. And the other show of that caliber I remember was North and South with Patrick Swayze from the mid 80s. So it was a great time for a groundbreaking move. HBO teams up with BBC to raise ridiculous amount of money and Rome is born. Luckily, it delivered changing the landscape of historical TV forever. This series reflects on the events that led to the reorganization of the Roman Republic into the Roman Empire, starting at the very end of the Gallic Wars, and it does it in a very specific way. A huge part of its mature storytelling is delivered through the eyes of the two Roman soldiers, Lucius Varenus and Titus Pullo, very charismatic, very relatable characters, both with their own problems and outlook on life. Watching them is basically like watching a bickering couple that is still very much in love. They're basically like salt and pepper, very different, but function best together. Fun fact, Lucius Varenus and Titus Pullo were two Roman centurions mentioned in Julius Caesar's personal writings. Now, Caesar actually never states the number of the legion they were part of, but the show presents them as the members of the 13th, you know, for the cool factor, I guess. Both of their stories are seemingly blended in power struggles and political intrigues and drama of Roman nobles and their families, making it easy and fun to follow, even for somebody who is not heavy into the Roman history. And all of that is taken to the next level of exposure, and the show very quickly presents us its true colors, which is red. Lots of red. Out of two seasons, the first one actually can be viewed as its own standalone miniseries that is fully dedicated to the political and military confrontation between Caesar and Pompey, Caesar's rise to power and his disagreements with elites that eventually led to his notorious assassination. Season 2 gets dirty with the consequences of Caesar's death, shift in power dynamics and the last civil war of the Roman Republic led by Caesar's old grown-up great-nephew Octavian. It also shows us Egypt and manages to squeeze in a relationship between the best Cleopatra that has ever graced our silver screens and Mark Antony. But it does skip through some historical events rather quickly. For a good reason, as it turns out, the series were planned to run for the whole five seasons, but HBO made a decision to cancel Rome before season two even aired. So all that material got crammed into the end of the season two. I'm eating some juicy details. One of the reasons behind such an abrupt cancellation was the poor planning and high production costs. A huge chunk of that money went into the construction of a life-size replica of the city of Rome at Cinecitta Studios in Italy. It was built for longevity and it shows. Everything is a visual delight, even the public latrines. Okay, I'm joking. The hole in the stone is a hole in the stone. Unless you're rich, then it's a hole in the marble. Come Rome few years later, Blu-ray format would have been established by then, and who knows, maybe season one sales could have helped recoup some of the construction costs. HBO actually regretted their decision to can it after seeing DVD sale numbers. The second reason for cancellation was behind the scenes drama between executives and Cina Cheetah Studios and their frustration with Italian officials and the way the business run there in general. Ah, uh, piss and blood. No details on that one, maybe someone just wanted a little bit more denarii. Fun fact, as if fate itself decided the series should end, a fire broke out at Cina Cheetah Studios just several months after the Rome's finale. And while the most of the set luckily remained untouched, at least a third of a slum district got lost, primarily because it was built of wood and fabric, just to show off authenticity. Luckily, things are much different today, and the sets are actually being reused for the joint Italian-UK production of the TV series Domina. In 2020, there was some talk about making a feature out of Rome, 
just the way they did with Deadwood, but we all know what that year brought to us instead. Thank you. Regardless of the fact, was Rome ahead of its time or not, it feels like it was meant to happen. Experiences gained helped HBO to launch Game of Thrones without similar hiccups and change the TV history yet once again. It also paved the way to the movie 300 and TV shows like Spartacus, The Tudors, and arguably maybe a few others. So when it comes to the blockbuster television, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that all roads lead to Rome. If you're my uncle, I must give you the road. Please let me know in the comments what do you think would have happened if Rome had arrived just a decade later. And if you haven't seen it, it's a memorable experience. So there you go, Rome in all its glory. Thank you so much for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one.